Hello, I'm Eve, and this is a series of videos aimed to help you get your child get some solid sleep at night. If you want to know a bit more about me, you'll find that in our intro video. This one's going to give you some easy to follow, practical tips on how to get rid of that dummy, be it in the night or day or both. Right, let's get started. I'm asked almost weekly what my opinion on dummies is, both from expectant mums and those who are regretting their choice to ever start. My own view is that the dummy is an absolute wonder tool when it's used correctly so that it serves you and the baby, not that you become a slave to it. If you're putting the dummy in several times a night or finding your child is getting a dependency on it or feel it's not serving its purpose of making life better and easier, or that you're shoving it in because you don't know what else to do, then it's time to do something about it. To make sure the dummy serves you and your baby and is a help and not a hindrance, it helps if we put some rules and restrictions in place when it comes to dummy use. When dummy use has become a problem and or you want to get rid of it, but you don't know how, follow my easy tips to make life easier all round. You want to start by reducing its use. If you use the dummy in the car, on the sofa, in bed and walking around, in the buggy, begin by not having it in just one of those areas and I'd pick the easiest area first. Distract with food or an activity. Don't enter into discussing it. So once you've explained that you're not having the dummy and make sure you're on their level and physically and calmly but confidently tell them, then don't go into it again don't keep being drawn back into the conversation. If you're being repeatedly told, mummy, I want the dummy, explain it first of all, briefly and confidently. We're not having the dummy at the moment. And then before it's sunk in, immediately distract, not to one new thought, but five or six. Let me explain. So instead of just repeating yourself with a negative response, no, you're not having the dummy. No, you're not having it. I haven't got it, it's gone. That's a negative thought and it leaves them in that zone. It's not gonna get you anywhere and you're in fact gonna have a really distressed child and there's no need for that. That would result in a stressed mum too. What we're gonna do instead is take them five or six steps away from the dummy thought. For example, darling, mummy's explained that we're not going to be having the dummy now. Now we're on the way to the park. Are you going to get on the slide when we get there? It was very high last time. Do you remember that boy who went down so fast? He had a red hat on, didn't he? Now you're on to thought four. When we're at the park, do you think we might collect some of those conkers that we saw last week? Should we take one of those home to daddy to show him? Look at your shiny red boots down there. I bet they get muddy and so on and so forth. Keep going until you can visibly see or sense your child letting go of it. You might feel a bit silly, but trust me, it works. The more you believe in it, they will. I can tell you from first-hand experience, it is worth it. By the time you've done all of that, you're several thoughts away from the dummy. And yes, they might go back to it, of course, but don't engage in it. Don't get drawn back into it. Don't find yourself repeating it more and more exasperatedly. Just ignore it. Talk about other things. Distract. I promise you this will get easier and easier and it will all pass if you stick to it and the time between asking for it and complaining about it will reduce. Once you've reduced the places that you have the dummy, keep doing that, knocking them off one at a time, until you might say, for example, it's only upstairs or in the bedroom or at sleep time. You might want to reduce use until you're at the point where they have to take out the dummy out of their mouth when they wake up and put it under their pillow. They mustn't leave their room without doing that. We had a really nice rule in our house with our children, where if they'd ask for it, mommy, I really want my dummy. I'd say, oh, okay, that's fine. Go and lie down in your bed then if you're tired. They might have a friend around at the time. And of course they didn't want to stop what they were doing and go and lie in their bedroom on their own. So very soon they stopped asking for it. If I remained consistent. Those rules had another benefit. The restrictions made it very easy for the dummy to be got rid of altogether. When you do decide to go for it, stick to your guns and see it through. It's going to be as hard for you and probably, if I'm honest, even harder actually than for your child. Don't get yourself into the habit as I did of thinking they can't sleep without their dummy. Of course they can. They don't need a dummy to sleep any more than you or I do. So choose your day 
make it easy on yourself. That might be a weekend where you get moral support or chance for rest. And like the reducing the dummy advice, don't get into it. Once you've explained it, talk about something else each time. Don't go into believing and being pulled into their insecurity that they can't sleep without it. We have up to that point reinforced those insecurities by giving the dummy each time, but they can do it and they need your reassurance and assertiveness and confidence to lead them into believing that they can do it because they truly can, trust me. I hope you find some peace in the fact that in all my years and everything I've ever watched and read, there has never ever been a child that has been unable to give up the dummy. You can do this. Let's show them and tell them lead them safely, securely into, into guiding them to believing that they can. When you do finally get rid of the dummy, it really doesn't matter which tactic you use, whether it's the dummy fairy or Father Christmas or the babies in the hospital or anywhere else that they go to or are taken by. It's actually almost irrelevant. What is important is that you get them involved in it if they're older. They might, for example, go on a dummy hunt and gather them together and put them in the bin. Although this feels quite drastic, I remember my panic at the realisation there was no going back once my son had thrown his away. This is a great thing to do, actually, because it's so final. They're in a dirty, irretrievable place. And there's also not that spare dummy that you accidentally, on purpose, know is on the top of the microwave or down the back of the bed or in the kitchen drawer. When you go for it, go for it have a reward in place for an older child that they can get when they go through the night without it and not before. If you'd like a free video where I congratulate your child personally for giving up the dummy, let me know and I'll send you one. Please use it if you feel it might give your child a lift and recognition for that much needed achievement. Before you know it, believe it or not, dummies will be a thing of the past. If you do use them again for another child, and that's absolutely fine, just remember to restrict use and have them serve you and not the other way round. And things should be a lot easier the second or third time. I wish you the very best of luck with getting rid of those dummies when it's time. And do let me know how you get on.